What are the crew cabins like on a cruise ship? Depending on your job and your department is, is what's going to determine your living quarters and how many uh, roommates you're going to have or if you have a window, something like that. So the, the different tiers on the cruise ship, the way I see it, you have, it's like a pyramid. The top you have the officers, then you have managers and supervisors, staff and crew. So at the very top, I guess better accommodations, you know, bigger beds, bigger space, your own cabin, windows, stuff like that. And then as you get down below to staff and crew, um, you have either two people in a cabin, um, in the lower decks with no window, with bunk beds, you have four berth cabins, six people, eight people in a cabin, um, depending on your ship and depending on what department you're in. In the entertainment department, I don't believe anyone for Norwegian in any of my departments roomed with more than one person. Occasionally, you, would, you could have three people in a cabin, but a lot of those times, those cabins were either four person or even six person cabins. So three people in a cabin big enough for six people, you know, not too bad. You have extra beds that aren't being used. You can use that for storage. Um, and the floor plan is a little bit bigger, you know, so it just depends. The two person cabins tend to be a lot, you know, small enough. The cabins, my cab, I was always, my cabins, in my experience, were always two person cabins. And they were the size of your bedroom at home, but probably smaller than that. Um, it wasn't that bad. Two people trying to get dressed at the same time, very difficult to do. Um, you're bumping each other. So, But if you're in there alone, if your uh, roommate is off at work and you're in the room by yourself getting ready, you know, it's fine. You just kind of stand in the middle of the floor. Um, but the cabins, when you walk in, usually it'll have the bathroom, um, which is also pretty small. It's got a sink, a toilet, and a shower, all about the size of like, you know, a porta potty, you know, a small closet, but all that stuff is in there. Um, and then you have your uh, a desk with a chair, put your computer on there, or whatever, but just one, two closets um, and no dresser. So all your clothes are in your, in your little wardrobe kind of thing. Not very big, you know. You do have two drawers under the bed. So under the, if it's bunk beds, underneath the bottom bunk you have two drawers two big drawers big ish so you and your roommate each have your own drawer basically um you just figure it out that's why packing is important because you don't want to bring too much because you don't have a lot of places to put it you know and shoes especially i could put you could sometimes put shoes up above the wardrobe um up here it's kind of like a makeshift shelf or down in the bottom little cubby of your of your drawer but if you have lots and lots of shoes it's going to be hard to find a place to put them now, depending on your job, though, um, if you're coming in as a manager or a supervisor, um, which would be very fortunate for you, um, or an officer, you know, you'll your likelihood of getting your own cabin is pretty great. So my, I had a supervisor who had their own cabin, but it was still on deck three, the same deck as me. So we didn't have any windows down there, um, but he had his own room. It was a twin bed, but he lived there, you know, he had his own room. So that was very, very nice. Um, officers, though, those with stripes and managers also get their own cabin. But on deck four, they have um, the square. They don't open. The windows don't open, but they do have windows. And it's a big room, and they have a, a full or a queen-size bed in there. So a little more space by yourself, a little more privacy, um, and a window to look out. So that's very, very nice. So, you know, if you're on cruise ships for a while and you get promoted and you get to new positions, you gain more stripes, um, with more experience, you, you not only will you get, you know, maybe raises as you get higher positions, but you get better um, living quarters and accommodations like that. Um, and then like the captain and, and the big officers, the directors, hotel director, cruise director, they live on the bridge, you know, so that's where all the, that's where all the navigation officers up there, that's where they steer the vessel up on the bridge. So they, um, and that's manned 24 seven. So the captain and, and the big officers live up there and they have, um, it's like a little apartment up there. They have a bathroom, they have a living room with a couch and stuff, and a bedroom separate with a full-size bed, and sometimes a balcony. 
that they can go out. So, you know, but then again, the captain, they've been doing it for a while. You know, they, they've earned these, uh, these um, accommodations. But, you know, it's really not that bad, um, at least for in my department, living with a roommate. It's worse if you have a roommate you don't get along with, someone who's, who's dirty, who, who doesn't, um, who isn't trying to make the best out of the situation. Um, it can go south very poorly, and you don't really get a choice of your roommate. It's going to be someone within your department, um, but that doesn't mean you're going to get along with them, you know. And if it's someone that you work with all the time and you're with them too much, you know, you, you might clash heads. So it's the, the roommate is, is worse than, or a potential roommate is more of a struggle than, than the potential struggle for, for the size of the living quarters, you know, and you get used to it. Now, if you start um, dating people and sharing your bed, it starts to get very tight. I did have an issue with one of my roommates. He started dating a girl and, and she would sleep over in our cabin a lot. And then, you know, having three people in the cabin all the time, it's just there's not there's not enough space to host so many people, you know, and so you have to be open with your roommate. You have to have those discussions, you know, can we have people over? Can we have people sleep over? You can't just assume your roommate's OK with it. It's 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 your roommate. You know, you, you have to work with each other. Um, and so sometimes you run into problems, but other times you have a great roommate. I've had great roommates that we get along great. I've had roommates where we have totally opposite schedules. So when I'm working, they're in the cabin by themselves, lots of privacy, having doing what they want to do. And then they're at work and I come in and they're gone and you have lots and lots of privacy. Um, a great roommate situation. I've also had roommates that, um, I, I lived with a musician once that didn't work nearly as much as I did. And he also didn't have much of a life. So when he wasn't playing music, he was in the cabin all the time. And and it, it did start to irk me because there was there's no really place for privacy on the cruise ship. And sometimes you come back to your cabin hoping that your roommate will be gone just so you can be alone for a little bit. And he was never gone ever. And it and it, it was just um it oh man, it sometimes privacy is pretty crucial. That's what you know, honestly and, and toward the end of my, my contracts when I just when I was starting to think about uh, not doing ships anymore, I started like, you know, I wonder if I can pay money out of my, I wonder if I could take a pay cut just to get my own cabin. I wonder if I can, I can get a, uh, uh, if I can pay somebody just so I can have my own room, um, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not that bad. It's just you, sometimes you start really wanting that privacy. Now with Norwegian, we have the really big ships as well. So we have the smaller ships. I worked on some of the smaller ships, the Star, the Dawn, the Pearl, but we have the really big ships like the Epic um, and the Escape. And they're so big a lot of times they have um, they have enough real estate down down in the lower decks that crew members can actually have their own bedroom anyway or their own cabin anyway so and I th and how, how those bigger ships are set up is you'll have two solo cabins connected by a shared bathroom so you're still sharing the bathroom but you have your own room if they're small teeny tiny teeny tiny enough for a bed and that's about it but after you start working on cruise ships and you see how little privacy there really is um, and the lifestyle change that you're, that you're going through to, to when you're working there, you know, I would sleep. Sometimes you're like, I would sleep in a closet just to have some privacy or, or I would sleep in my office just to have some time, time alone, you know, just, just something, just to switch it up. So I think that that's a much better situation now. Depending on your job, it determines if you're going to have one roommate or four roommates or six roommates. Casino staff for Norwegian had four, sometimes six people in the same cabin. Um, restaurant staff could have six people in a cabin. Um, bartenders, you know, stuff like that. Just depending on the department. And your contract, when you get offered the position, um, they'll, they should tell you kind of um, your kind of where, where you stand in in that realm and and the benefits that you're going to receive and, and what to expect um so just be aware but and it's also you know if if you're going to move in with somebody or two people or 10 people <laughs> you know it's never going to be 10 but if you're going to have roommates you it's it's more important to to figure out how to live with people and not worry about the size of the cabin 
Um, the little things that might start getting to you, like not having a window, like you'll start thinking about it. It'll be nice to have a window in here. Um, but I will say when there's no windows and it's pitch black, going to sleep it makes it pretty easy and you sleep pretty deep. Um, the sway of the ocean put you, rock you to sleep like a, like a baby and then pitch black, you get, you get some good, good sleep, you know. So uh, it's not all that bad. Um, and then if you, when you start, you know, you might have one or two roommates, but if you keep, it, keep going and you like the living at sea lifestyle and you get promoted to a supervisor or a manager position, then you can then you're going to start getting uh, better benefits you're going to get your own cabin you're going to get um maybe a window um among other things so it's uh it can definitely be great it can definitely be um it's an experience though you know if if you don't get along with people if you absolutely cannot share with people if you absolutely are 100 percent against bunk beds and being with a roommate in your room like in a dorm in college the only option you're going to have is to somehow get a manager supervisor position right off the bat, which is possible. Um, there's also different positions um, like the port shopping consultant, which is a third party company, um, like a concessionaire. And they, they get their own room, but they don't work for NCL. They work for a different company that's comes on the ship. You see what I'm saying? So it just depends, you know, or if you're a, an entertainer, and if you're a if you're a singer, you know the singers in the production cast get their own cabin on deck four. They get their own officer's cabin um, with windows and big beds and their own bathroom and stuff. Uh, or if you're a guest entertainer, which is really what a lot of people they start on ships as in the entertainment and in, in entertainment department, and then they're like, man, the life is to be a guest entertainer, comedians, a singer, like. Uh, outsource singers, you know, um, magicians, guest entertainers, um, stuff like that. So, or uh, uh, hypnotists, they're um, just kind of like this this realm of entertainers like this that that they're basically guest status. So they get officer cabins, they get um, extreme passenger privilege, they get paid more, they work m cruises. They don't work. Con they 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 work cruises at a time they don't work months you know they're they're on board for whatever so if that's the route you're trying to go you know you, you can hone your skills in the entertainment industry and you can become a guest entertainer and that's a that's a, a nice cushy situation but you know you got to pay your dues sometimes and you gotta you gotta have the skills to do it um for me the the route would have been to to get into broadcast management um which for norwegian cruise line or it's only on the really big ships so you start as a broadcast technician, then you can go on the big ships and be a broadcast technician. Um, if you're on the cruise staff, you can start as cruise staff. You can be promoted into assistant cruise director, which is a, a supervisor position. You get your own cabin, and then eventually cruise director. Or if you're a musician, you can start uh, in the band. You can become the band master. You become uh, the music director. So there's, there's paths to go, but it takes time, and it takes patience. And you're probably going to start out with a roommate, or more than one roommate, and eventually, you know, you, you put up with the stuff you have to put up with, and then you can get to these things that, that if it matters to you to have your own cabin, you can get there. You just have to work for it and be patient and, uh, and keep getting better at your jobs so you can get those next opportunities.